you know, there's a lot happening right now in the labor movement. Uh, you know, there was a big struggle here. There still might be a struggle here um, against the major studios over the overwork issue. You know, uh, mm. you know, and a lot of these big film studios here, they're making folks work 16, 18 hour days often, you know, sometimes you know, regularly, you know, working 14, 16 hour days, sometimes 18 hour days uh, on these film sets. And, you know, there was supposed to be a resolution in this contract, in this tentative agreement approached by IATSE about, um, you know, creating a situation where workers wouldn't have to work those kind of hours. And after the pandemic, people just aren't willing to do that kind of work uh, anymore. You know, people took time off during the pandemic. They took care of their families and they started to realize, you know, our jobs really burn us out. Maybe mm. they're better alternatives. And this is something we're seeing just not uh, in, you know, film production, but, you know, in, in the most recent numbers from August, over 700,000 people quit the retail sector for other wow. sectors. Uh, you know, we're seeing, you know, something like 3 million people a month change jobs. Mm. It's a very loose labor market, but part of it is that, one, you know, a lot of people went out of the workforce, 2 million more people retired, 3 million more people quit their jobs to take care of their kids. And, you know, we're seeing a huge, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, are dealing with disability issues from COVID. So we're seeing a, a huge issue. And so we're seeing strikes all over. Right. Uh, this is part of a big trend. Uh, you know, we have a strike tracker at Payday Report. We've tracked 1,600 strikes since the beginning of the wow. pandemic. Wow. Uh, in the past year, we've tracked over 400. And that's what we know about because oftentimes we'll find videos on TikToks of kids, you know, doing like rollout of a McDonald's. And we'll be like, we want to put it on the strike tracker. So, Y'all should have tagged the McDonald's in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that we could figure out the address. We don't know where this place is. So, Mike, so that's one of our criteria. Mike, mm -hmm. let me jump in there because this is this is Striketober, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, and I think a lot of people just would not know though if not for the deer strikers. 10,000 of them striking this week and bringing this level of attention to it, I don't think people would know about any of the strikes that are going on. Why is it that the average person who they themselves probably could very well be involved with something as simple as, as, as and it's not even simple, organizing your McDonald's, do that and walk out, do what you got to do. But why is it that people who would participate on that they would not know that there's a broader tapestry of strikers happening all around the country, like you all are tracking at Payday Report. Well, because one, there's not really many labor beats on reporters on the beat anymore tracking this stuff. So, you know, it goes by the waste uh, side. But not only that, I, I think the big issue right now is that, you know, this has really captured the public imagination. There have been strikes at places like Nabisco and Frito-Lay and... Um, Kellogg and now John Deere, those are big name brand companies. But every day we're seeing retail workers walk out, on, out of their jobs, even without the support of unions. It's just the way that wow. covering the labor movement happens is, you know, you really have to be paying attention to a lot of little struggles and a lot of workplaces, maybe, you know, like seven or eight people in this workplace here, you know, eight or nine people in that workplace here. And unfortunately, you know, that's not the way the media is set up. Now that there's these big name brand household, you know, Americana names like Kellogg and John Deere and mm. possibly the Hollywood studios. Now, you know, the media is really, really paying attention. Oh, uh, good. good. And, and, and it's been, you know, quite fascinating as I'm even sitting here watching, you know, the striketober clips come up to see the media and to see, you know, mainstream outlets say American workers are on the march again. I'm like, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, it's an inflection point, Mike. I think we're in an inflection point in this country, and I think you you, you pinpointed um, the exact cause. Um, I think the American people expected the American government to do a whole lot better by us during this pandemic. And when the people realized that we were on our own, they said, fine, we know how to handle this. We don't have to work for you. Not during a pandemic. We don't have to slave away at your slave wages. Um, I want to play this first clip, and it's from the recount. They're, they're doing great work. This is the second clip that we played from them directly today, so I want to make sure we give recount a shout out. But here's a pretty much a, a summary, uh, if I'm not mistaken, David, um, of, of the different strikes that are happening across the country. Let's take a quick look at that. It strike Tober. 10,000 employees of John Deere, members of the United Auto Workers Association, 
are on strike. Memphis Kellogg workers plan to strike today. The union representing film and television crews says its 60,000 members will strike Monday. Workers at Heaven Hill Distillery are now in their fourth week of their demonstrations. Local iron workers union is looking for better benefits and higher wages and now they're walking the picket line to prove it. St. Vincent Hospital reportedly declares an impasse on negotiations in the hospital's months-long nurses strike. Coal miners in one community have been pushing for better wages and benefits. They've been on strike right now for months. In California and Oregon, 24,000 nurses and other healthcare workers at Kaiser Permanente voted to authorize a strike over pay and better working conditions. We are now in day 18 of the RTC bus driver strike. Mm. Mike, workers of the United States unite. Yeah, and I, you know, it's at a point now where people feel like they have a lot of advantage that, you know, employers are scared, you know, I'm going around downtown Pittsburgh and I see bars with signs in their windows saying they'll pay people a $500 hiring bonus if they stay a month. <laughs> Employers are okay. desperate to find folks, you know. And, hold, and hold out for a thousand people. Hold out. No, no, y'all better go get that 500. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. I'm out of pocket. Well, but I'm, I'm even hearing on, on, on the radio, I'm hearing on the radio, you know, Amazon is now offering thousand dollar hiring bonuses, and they're claiming mm. they're claiming that they're raising their wages to eighteen dollars an hour. Um, and you know, we've seen CVS raise their wages and PNC Bank. And I think after the pandemic, you know, we had what seven hundred thousand people die. Uh, right. You know, whenever there's been events like that in American history, you know, if you look at the Civil War, you know, the modern labor movement was founded by Civil War veterans that came back and said, you know, well, we fought for free labor. You know, what do we have to go back and be treated this way? Yeah, for? Right. And, and if you look at World War Two, which, you know, 1946 is a record year in America for strikes when people came home from the war. Uh, after any period of mass sacrifice in American history, there's always been a period where folks have demanded a lot more. Mm. And I think this is certainly going to be one of them because so many folks uh, you know, I was, uh, we have an interview coming out with Boots Riley, and Boots Riley yeah. said to me that the we're, the biggest mistake the ruling class ever made was coming up with the phrase essential workers. 